Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I've been really happy over the last week hearing the number of people that wholeheartedly agree with my recommendation to watch this Apollo 11 documentary, which is currently in IMAX for a very limited engagement. And they're not paying me to say this. I, I think this is a magnificent piece of work. But what I found interesting is the number of people that have come to me with questions of things that they have seen for the first time. So I want to talk about one very specific thing that people have asked me about. During the launch sequence, we get to see a deep, you know, underneath the back end of a Saturn V powered by its five F1 engines, the most powerful single uh, chambered engines that have ever flown. And you've probably seen a few still photos showing, you know, the massive size of these engines with a, an industry standard Werner von Braun for scale. But despite being massive, they are also intricately detailed with lots of piping throughout the chamber walls to protect the uh, engine from the massive amount of heat that it generates. But the engines we see propelling Apollo 11 upwards look like they're made of hammered sheet metal. There are several examples of F1 engines on display in museums and other places, and they all show the, the detailed version. They don't show this rough version. When you see the Saturn V, which is on display, the fully assembled version, the engines do not look like the engines we see on the Apollo 11 Saturn V. So what's going on here is that the engines were covered with a, an Inconel foil with an asbestos insulation layer, because they wanted to protect the engines from extra heat. During testing, they began to get worried about the heat radiating out from other engines. In particular, that core engine was going to be experiencing a lot more heat than the outside engines. But also, as the rocket got higher and faster, a combination of the lowering air pressure and the aerodynamic effects would actually start to pull the rocket exhaust up back in towards the engines and indeed up the side of the rocket. What happens is the tip of the rocket is hitting into the air and it creates a shock cone, a point where the air is basically being accelerated and behind that shock cone the air pressure becomes much lower. Because it's much lower, it's actually sucking the rocket exhaust back up and it, it starts to rise up the side of the rocket. It's really fascinating to watch this with something like the Saturn V where they have these great tracking shots. But it doesn't just happen with the Saturn V, it happens with a lot of different rockets. Here it is on the space shuttle where the low pressure area behind the external tank starts to suck exhaust gases in there, and the bottom of that ends up getting burnt quite severely during the launch. It's amazing to think that the space shuttle is moving supersonic at this point, but the entrained atmosphere and gases around the structure is actually pulling exhaust gases forwards. So you can imagine why the designers might have decided to add this extra thermal protection at some point in the process. The reason why we don't see this on most of the engines in museums is because the insulation wasn't added by the engine manufacturers and it wasn't added when the stage was assembled. It was added in the vehicle assembly building when they were stacking the rocket. And apparently it took something like 800 to 1000 man hours of work to put this on there. The actual design of the thermal protection system is pretty simple. It's a pair of layers of Inconel foil separated by an asbestos insulation insulating layer. And yeah, look, you can see the engine wrapped up in this in the Apollo 4 launch. That was the very first Saturn V launch. I think this is a great shot because you can also see the uh, film cooling layer where it transitions then to the actual proper exhaust. I think the reason why many people haven't seen this is because, well, first of all, the launches are very, very spectacular. So actually noticing that detail, that difference in the engines is a tall order when you've got this ridiculously bright contrast. But equally, the images that we have from the early testing, they don't show the, they, they show the engines being tested without this. And also there was no cameras placed underneath the spacecraft when it was sitting on the launch pad. So we get, didn't get to see the images of that generally. The first time I found out about them is when I got given this book, the NASA Saturn V Owner's Workshop Manual. I don't know, if you're in Britain, you probably know the Haynes Manuals from trying to fix your car. You know, you, they would tear down a car and tell you how to fix things. I remember using one to replace the gearbox on a Fiat Uno. That was fun. 
but more recently they seem to be doing a pretty good business creating manuals for things like the Saturn V, the Space Shuttle, and the Starship Enterprise. But the Saturn V and the Apollo missions are just such big, complicated things that there are so many tiny pieces of minutia that you will learn, and it, it's fun, it's great. I mean, the, the only downside is that sometimes, say, you make a blockbuster movie like Apollo 13 and then realise afterwards that actually the engines are wrong. It's still a great movie. And before you ask, First Man got it correct. But while the special effects are cool and all that, I think the real thing is where my heart is at. It is definitely the biggest practical effect. And, you know, looking at the flames moving around here, you can see why they might need to mod to retrofit some extra thermal protection on their engine. And so that explains why the engines on the Saturn Vs that actually launched all had this extra foil thermal protection over it, which somehow never made it into the, the museum versions or onto the examples that we see elsewhere on display. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Shh.